just uh, week three. We have uh, almost the fifth course of tires done. We'll probably have that done tomorrow. And the thermal wrap uh, for the first four feet uh, of the building is up, so not bad. All right, so today we're talking thermal wrap on the Earthship. Um, basically, I wanted to show you the process that can make it easier to understand how to wrap your Earthship in insulation. Uh, this is the part, this is the, the single part that people mess up consistently uh, when they try to DIY their own house and they just don't understand why you need to do the thermal wrap in a particular, very meticulous uh, way with no leaks and no gaps so that you have the maximum efficiency of thermal battery in your house. So that's a lot of gobbledygook. You probably didn't understand what I meant right there, but I'm gonna turn the camera over, uh, take a look at the wall and explain it, and then it'll all make sense. So basically in the Earthship, you want to keep the heat inside the building. And so you're burying panes of insulation in the ground, which are getting wrapped double ply in, is it 10 mil? I forget. The insulation is, uh, the plastic is quite thick. Uh, is this eight mil? Ron, what's the plastics mil? Six. Okay, so we got six mil doubled and then wrapped over this uh, sheet of expanded polystyrene, which is basically just foam. We're burying it on both sides and usually when you're building an airship with a crew of laborers and you don't have an excavator, then what you would do is you'd build up layer by layer and you'd be backfilling on either side, making sure that this is level as you go up. Uh, in this event, we had an excavator, which won't change much what I'm explaining for you, but it just does uh, explain for you why we're able to complete this task, wrapping the entire building in maybe one day. So what I just want to say here is that let's say there was no insulation and this was the beginning. Everything relates to your tires. And the tip that I want to give you is to understand that you can always reference the tires, but you want to decide on a course. So in this event, it was the fourth course up. So we took a measurement from the fourth course tire, right? And we came out and we said, this is going to be the distance that we want for the amount of earth depending on where we live. So for you, you have to calculate uh, the amount of earth that's necessary for a thermal battery. But in our case, uh, in this area, we chose a little bit less than what you usually do. I think usually it's uh, 40, 44, something like that. And we're doing 38. And one of the reasons we have to do 38 is because of constraints on the other side with the property boundary. But anyways, that allows you to understand like if, for example, you were to have a situation more like this where you'd been berming your tires as you were going up and now it's time to do the insulation wrap, regardless of whether you have the heavy machinery to rip all the dirt out or what you're looking at is a mound of dirt and you now have to carve your insulation in, which, you know, for us, it's really easy to see the straight line because we've dug down and we've leveled the floor. But for you, it's going to be a lot different because you'll most likely have ber bermed and still have dirt here because you've been building up and you forgot to do the insulation so that's first of all the first mistake is that you should always be doing the insulation as you're going up with the tires so you need to know about that first the second thing is is that if you do um, go oh no now i need to put insulation in you're going to be trenching here so what i'm recommending is that you run a line for your trench in our case we don't really need this string line and honestly it's just going to get in my way but it does double check my work so that i know that everything's going in where it's supposed to be for you, it might be a little uh, nicer to run a string line so that you know what angle you're going to cut this piece at is another thing. So if you know the angle that you're meeting this angle, you can cut your foam and join it more precisely so you don't have any thermal bridging 
because thermal bridging is the worst nightmare of someone who's living in a passive house that's buried under the ground. You don't want leaks. You don't want leaks of cold air coming in. The other thing is, is that as you're trying to figure out what angle to come uh, at this uh, joint here with, it's really helpful to have the string because when you're laying the panels down and burying them, which is probably where you'll be at if uh, you've bermed your earthship and are installing them afterward, is you're gonna want your string line to make sure that you're always referencing the same course of tires, bringing out that, in our case, 38 inches. Also, a really great way to learn is to build one yourself. That's why I created the Earthship Model Kit. I wanted to put an Earthship in everyone's hands. I took everything I learned at the Earthship Academy and boiled it down into a 32-page, full-color, easy-to-understand booklet, which give you the basics of the Earthship Six Principles that make them some of the most sustainable buildings in the world. This educational package has been presented at the Earthship Biotexture Academy and in classrooms all around the world. So click the link below to learn more. The next thing is if you are doing it uh, via trench, our floor here has already been leveled. So I'm only a little bit off right here. That's mostly because I tamped it while I was walking and but I mean it's really close to level all over this floor and what I'm going to do now for this type of installation where you do have an excavator and you can come in is I'm going to be running these eight foot sheets covering them with plastic joining them so that they're staggered so that there's no break and then running it all the way here into the corner where we can basically just terminate it. So we're not gonna try and wrap around and waste time, energy, and money. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up to the same distance from this tire that we, the perimeter distance, the offset, which is 38. We'll terminate, we'll wrap the plastic around, and then we'll call it. So the plastic is gonna wrap around a little bit to create a trough for the water. If any water is coming down in the corner here as a result of the berm and the retaining wall, uh, that water will then be drained down. Obviously, this is Taos, New Mexico. The soil conditions are very different. You might need a French drain in here, or whatever, for your site. Um, Johnny's coming in like a beastie boy. He's like, what up? What up? All right, so that's it for the thermal wrap. We are wrapping it up today. No pun intended. Johnny is done with the tire work. Ron is just finishing backfilling over there. And uh, that's it. So it's official in the books, week three, thermal wrap done by Thursday. And we're gonna be putting some cisterns in tomorrow. So we're making huge progress here on the site. And yesterday we got the thermal wrap finished all the way around the building. So you can see that <clears throat> we are We got the thermal wrap up on the east side of the building from the west side all the way to the east side of the building. So now our insulation for the building is eight feet up and it's wrapped uh, in a double ply plastic. So that's the vapor barrier to prevent moisture from penetrating into the building. And today is a big day on the job. We're going to be trying to finish up the final course of tires, making one last push to get that top course set and pounded. And then after that, we can start working on getting our plates ready so that we can bond the framing to the tires, which is a big moment. So after the tires and the top course are finished and we put the plate down, we're gonna be completely finished with the foundation work uh, of the building, including uh, pouring the grade beam, uh, pouring the bond beam. Um, so this week, we hope to have all the steel ready for the inspection by the end of the week. So. This is a pretty big one. Uh, after this, things aren't going to be looking the same, and we're about to push through. Ba -ba. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba.